Haleluya. 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 My dear sisters and brothers, all of us are gathered together today to pray for our families. Every family has to be of one heart and one mind. That is the theme of our day. Of one heart and of one mind. This is and this should be the characteristic of every Christian community and of our family as well. However many we are there together, it is not a bodily presence to each other that should unite us, rather a union of the heart and mind. There's something beautiful in the Bible. When we speak of one heart and one mind, we remember Mother Mary. You know why? From the book of Acts chapter 1, the early Christian community, after the ascension of the Lord, they were gathered together in the upper room. And the names of the people gathered are given to us, the twelve apostles. The men the Lord had chosen to belong to him, to become the pillars of the Christian community. And then the name of Mother Mary the mother of Jesus was there. It was in the presence of Mother Mary that the first Christian community was gathered in one heart and one mind. There's a reason to say this. These apostles of Jesus, when they were with Jesus, Often, they were not of one heart and one mind. Something very significant. Often, when Jesus was teaching, they were not attentive. At one time, when Jesus was teaching, they were arguing among themselves who was greater and who was smaller. Among the twelve, they wanted to be greater than everyone else. They were fighting with each other. And yet, in the presence of Mother Mary, they were united one heart and one mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us, that these people, the apostles and Mother Mary, they were praying together for the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus had asked them to wait and pray until you are clothed with power from above. Mother Mary prepared them to pray to the Holy Spirit. Mother Mary was the first human person to get the promise of God. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And she offered her life in the hands of God, saying, Here I am, your handmaid. Let it be done to me according to your word. And this is what Mother Mary was teaching the apostles to surrender, to offer themselves in the hands of God that the Holy Spirit may descend upon them. It is when they were waiting for the Holy Spirit that they were united of one heart 
and of one mind hallelujah hallelujah wherever mother mary was present mother mary always prepared always prepared everyone for the coming of the holy spirit preparing them to be servants and handmaids of the lord what she herself became in the presence of god when she was given the promise of the holy spirit because mother mary knew the only way life would become a celebration is the way of the holy spirit when the holy spirit comes upon us the holy spirit enables us to accept each other in love and life would be a celebration the so one time but the mary taught everyone to be a servant to be a handmaid of the lord that was at cana at cana celebration was coming to an end even before the banquet was complete because wine jars became empty nobody knew where to turn to everybody was upset because wine shall never run short during a marriage banquet the celebration was coming to an end it was but a mary who decided that celebration should not come to an end that family should continue to be a celebration and mother mary knew her son they have no wine and she turned the whole family to jesus to what he tells you to everybody in the family was prepared to do what jesus told them to do in other words they were ready to become servants and handmaids of the lord it is servants and handmaids who obey the whole family was prepared to obey the master jesus the lord and that's when the miracle took place water was turned to wine and the celebrations continued hallelujah hallelujah celebrations continued in a superior way my dear sister some brothers what was the miracle at cana often we interpret this miracle in a very superficial way that jesus gave them plenty of wine to drink well definitely jesus gave them plenty of wine to drink but then what jesus gave them was the new wine the wine of the superior quality in the new testament the new wine is the symbol of the holy spirit the symbol of the holy spirit remember on the day of pentecost when mother mary and the apostles were anointed by the holy spirit the apostles came out and they began to preach enthusiastically that Jesus is the Lord and Savior inviting everyone to believe in him and vigorously praising God some Jew standing behind began to criticize they said this Galilean is not drunk with the new wine early morning and that's why all this enthusiasm and vigor and Simon Peter knew their thoughts Peter did not deny Peter did not deny that they were intoxicated rather Peter said yes we are we are intoxicated with a new wine giving a new meaning to the new wine peter said 
This is the fulfillment of the prophecy of Joel. Quoting prophet Joel chapter 3 verses 1 onwards. Simon Peter said, This is the fulfillment of the prophecy of Joel. On the last day, I will pour out my spirit on my servants and my handmaids. From then on, the new wine became the symbol of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, what was really the miracle at Cana? The miracle at Cana was this. Jesus made marriages a new reality. A reality of the Holy Spirit. Jesus poured into every marriage the new wine, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, marriages after Cana are not the same. Before Cana, a marriage was a relationship between a man and a woman, two people. A man loving the woman, a woman loving the man, two people. But after Cana, marriage is not a relationship between two people, but a relationship among three persons. Husband, wife, plus the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My dear sisters and brothers, the third person, the third person of the Holy Trinity, the Holy Spirit enters into every marriage. That is what happened at the moment of your marriage when you were standing together, standing together before the altar, pledging your love for each other. That's when heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended into the two of you, uniting the two, becoming the bond of love, the bond of love between the husband and the wife, the third person of the Holy Trinity. Till that, you were a man, you were a woman. At that moment, you became a husband, a wife, united by the Holy Spirit. That's when God the Father's voice was heard. You are not two anymore. You are one. How did he become one? He became one in the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. In the intercession of Mother Mary, this miracle took place. The first miracle took place in the intercession of Mother Mary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My dear sisters and brothers, therefore, what is the secret? What is the secret of the success of the family community? How is it that family becomes a community, a Christian community? Family becomes a Christian community in the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. And the success of the family depends on this, whether you are able to feel the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. You know, in families, you do many things together. You sleep on the same bed. You eat at the same table. You live under the same roof. You drive in the same car. But all these activities, all these activities could merely be Two people doing things together. Not as a community. Not as a one heart and one mind. You will be united, one heart and one mind, not by what you do, but by the power from above, by the Holy Spirit. And therefore, the first thing in the morning, my dear sisters and brothers, the first thing to do in the morning is to renew this family commitment. Commitment to each other and to God. 
so that every morning may be a new beginning. God said it. Every morning, my love is fresh and new. Kneel down together at your bed. Hold on to each other and commit your life to God. Commit your life to each other and claim the promise. Claim the promise of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God will descend into your heart, into your midst, uniting the two of you together. The Holy Spirit once again becoming the bond between you. A new day. The sun is rising. The birds are chirping. The flowers are blooming. The rivers are flowing. A new day. It should be a new experience of the Holy Spirit. The new wine. The new wine descending into your relationship, into your midst. And then look at each other and smile. A smile will be divine. Your husband will see many other females looking at him and smiling, but your smile will remain warm and fresh in his heart. You know why? Your smile was more than human. There was the divine presence, the presence of the Holy Spirit in your smile. Your touch will remain a warm experience of love because that touch was the touch of the divine, of the Holy Spirit. Begin the day with this power, powerful experience of the Holy Spirit. You will never forget that experience the whole day. Wherever you go, whatever you do, whomever you meet, you will remember that experience as the most beautiful, the most warm, the warmest experience of love. And in the evening, someone told me, Father, in the morning it is easy enough to look at each other and smile. But not in the evening. You know why? By evening, many things have gone wrong. Many hurts, many complaints. My dear sisters and brothers, never, never go to bed with a tear in your eye. Never go to bed with a complaint on your lips. Never go to bed with anything wrong in your heart. You know why? You are giving opportunity to Satan if the Holy Spirit does not flow into your marriage. It is the evil spirit that is going to flow in. And then Paul wants us. Ephesians 426. Ephesians 426. Then Paul is warning us Get angry, but do not commit a sin. Get angry, but do not commit a sin. All of us get angry. It's something or other to get angry with the other. But do not commit a sin. When is it anger becomes a sin? When you keep it, when you keep it, you don't want to share it. You don't want to offer it to the Holy Spirit. You want to hold on to that wrong. You, you want to hold on to that hurt. You, you want to hold on to that drop of tear. You are not surrendering it. You are not offering it to the Holy Spirit. And that's when the evil spirit comes in. Where does he come in? Where does the evil spirit come in? Jesus said it, John 10.10. 10. The evil spirit comes in to destroy, to plunder, and to kill. How many families? How many families are plundered? How many families are destroyed and devastated? How many marriages are lost because you did not care to wait for the Holy Spirit at night before you go to bed? You did not care to take attention to what the Word of God is telling us. Wait upon God for the new wine to descend into your marriage. My dear sisters and brothers, when there is a failure in your marriage, when there is a wrong in your marriage, when there is a hurt in your marriage, 
What are you to do? Do not imagine you can please your wife giving her a new gold chain. If you want to give a gold chain, give it, but it's not a new gold chain. It's not inviting him to a party that the hurts will be resolved now in the Holy Spirit. The pain is to be taken out of your heart. Only the Spirit of God will be able to do it. Remember Jesus said, when someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other as well. Is that possible? Jesus is speaking of marriages, of family life. We may not be striking on the cheek when that could be happening. We are hurting. My husband hurt me. My wife hurt me. And then, and then we keep that hurt. Every male action, every male action has a female overreaction. We act and react. We react. Because why did I scream? I screamed because you shouted. I hit you because you tried to hit me. Action, reaction. This is the Isaac Newton's way. Isaac Newton said what? Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. That's not the norm of Christian communities of family life. Our family lives are to be anointed by the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. So Jesus said, when someone strikes you on the right cheek, when someone hurts you, what is to be done? Show to him the other cheek as well. He said, possible. It is not possible. It is not humanly possible. Why not humanly possible? Because when someone hurts me, when someone hurts me, when my wife hurts me, when my husband hurts me, I am naturally inclined, driven to react. How do I react? I react by anger, by depression. That is the first movement of the mind, of action-reaction. Now, there should be a second movement. That's the movement of the Holy Spirit. I pray. Remember, Jesus said to the apostles, wait and pray. That's what you must be doing in your upper room. You are hurt. You are sad. You are angry. Wait and pray. Holding on to your husband's hand. Holding on to your wife. Wait and pray for the Holy Spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, this is what Mother Mary is praying for us for. Let us be able to understand the meaning, the real meaning of Christian community, of our family community, of one heart and one mind, in order that we may be able to experience the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.